Welcome to the Google Classroom Basics tutorial. The purpose of this video is to show you how to get into Google Classroom, how to make a class, and post some basic assignments. We're going to start by finding your browser. I recommend Google Chrome for Google products, but you can certainly use something else. So we'll go ahead and open that. Once you have Google Chrome open, there are two different ways you can sign into Google Classroom. You can go through LCPS Go, And after you sign in, it will be in the group that says Google. And then you can click Google Classroom. Or it will ask you to sign in. The other way is to simply type this link into the address bar, classroom.google.com. Or you can use the waffle. If you're on any other Google product, you can click this waffle and find Classroom there. So there are a few different ways to get to Google Classroom. Once you're in Google Classroom, um, let's learn how to create a class. So you can see I have a number of classes already created in here, but let's say we wanted to make a new one. Um, your page might very well be blank here if you've never used Google Classroom before. So you're going to go up here and you're going to click the plus. And then you can join or create. We don't want to join. We want to make our own class. So we're going to click on create class. Now all you have to do is give it a name. The rest of these are optional. Um, you can certainly fill them in if you want, but it's not required. Then we're going to click on create. We're going to let it load. Now, once it's created, it'll take you right into your class. So some things to note about the layout here. Um, this section of the space down here on the bottom, this is where all of the information that you post for your students will appear. On the left-hand side here called Upcoming, this is where upcoming due assignments that you post will appear both for you and for students. And then the name and banner are here, and you can customize these by choosing Select Theme or by uploading your own photo. They do have a number of different themes you can choose from, or you can put your own picture there. This class code, this is what you will share with students in order to help them join your class. So you can send this code out to your students, um, and that is how they can join your class once you create it. So, up here at the top, let's talk a little bit more about this. We have the waffle where you can access other Google products. Um, we have the title of your class, and we have this hamburger over here. If you click on the hamburger, this will take you to the menu where you can look at a list of all of your classes. So if you have a number of different classes, you can first click on the hamburger, and then click over here on any one other class to change which class you're looking at. This one, the, when it defaults, when you load Google Classroom, it will default to the stream. That's where it just shows all of the assignments you've posted kind of in reverse chronological order. So the most recent thing you posted will be at the top. Here we have classwork. This is where things will appear in a little bit more of an organized fashion. You can create topics and then organize information by topics. I do mine by units. I've had other teachers who do it by um, type of information like notes, tests, homework, um, handouts, whatever. I've had teachers that organize it by day, so each day they make a new topic um, for students to easily find things. So there's a lot of different ways you can um, arrange your information in your classroom, and we'll come back to how we create assignments in a few minutes. The next uh, page you can view is the people page. This is where you can see a list of all the students that are in your class. Obviously we don't have any students in this class right now because it's fake. I'll show you what a real um, what a real page will look like in a few minutes. I'll show you my actual uh, class. Then we're going to go to grades. Um, this is where if you have graded assignments, all the students' names will appear, and then the grades that they've received on the work will be in the side. You don't really have to use this feature since we grade things in Phoenix. Um, it's helpful if you do things that you want to give quick feedback on. Some teachers like it, especially for formative things, um, but it's not strictly necessary. So let's focus on how to create an assignment. 
let's say, let's go back home. So if you're done with this class, you want to go back home. You can click on the hamburger and then click on classes. And this will take you back to the main page where all your classes are. So I'll show you, here is what my AP Psychology stream looks like. So you can see I posted an attitudes lesson just today for those students. Um, and then as I scroll down here, you can see all of the different things that I've posted, um, different work, um, some as assignments, some as notes. I have different things posted for them. And if we go to the classwork page, you can see I have my classwork arranged by topics. I've got important documents like the syllabus. I've got um, different units of instruction that I have. Uh, all the work I've ever posted the whole school year is accessible here. Um, and if I clicked on people or grades, it would show you the names and the grades for my students. I'm not going to do that because this is a publicly available YouTube video. Um, so let's go back to our sample class. Now, let's say you've created your class. We've got that on board. Now it's time to post an assignment. So we're loaded, logged into Google Classroom. We're going to click over here on Classwork. Okay, and now we have to click the button that says Create. So it's important when you're when you first load Google Classroom, you can't really create assignments here. You could post something simple like, hi, what's up? No school today. But um, that's just for simple things like posting messages, um, which students can then comment on. They can type things down here and put comments. So if you want to make an assignment or post some lecture notes or something, we're going to need to click on Classwork and then click on this big button that says create. Now there's a list of different things you can create in here. You can make a new topic for information. Let's see, I want to make a topic that's you know, unit one, right? And I can click add. Now I have a different topic. I'll, we'll get to what that means later. If I want an assignment, I want my students to actually do something. I would click on that. A quiz assignment, you can make a quiz for students in a Google form. I'll show you how to do that. Um, there's a question, which poses a question that then students can respond to in a comment. You can post material, which simply means something that you want to share that you don't expect students to turn anything back in. And then you can reuse a post if you have what you've already used. So let's start at the top. Let's start with assignments. So I want to click Create, and then I want to click Assignment. Okay, now there's a bunch of different stuff on here. Um, the title, you have to type in what is the title call it a sample assignment. Instructions, this is fully optional. You can type in something here for your students to do. Please complete the... Okay. Who's it for? Now this is where you can add things to multiple classes at once. See, I have different, I have a different class for each of my different psychology blocks. I would check each box that I wanted to post this assignment to. Right now, I obviously I don't want to post a fake thing to my real students, but you could select there. You can also only post an assignment for individual students if you only have specific people that you want to target an assignment to. You can give it a number of points, or you can make it ungraded. Uh, let's say this is a ten-point worksheet, or I could decide, oh, this is ungraded because it's formative, so I'll just call it ungraded. Either one is fine. Okay. The due date. When do you want it to be due? Um, this, and then it will show up as late after that. So let's say this assignment is going to be due tomorrow. So I'll click on tomorrow. Um, and then the topic, this is where I could say, oh, the topic, it goes in unit one. Remember I created that topic before? Or I can create a new topic, right? So let's create a topic for unit two, right? Or I can simply put it in unit one, which I already made. You can even add a rubric. If you want to create a rubric for how you're going to grade student work, um, that's a bunch of effort though. So if you're posting simple assignments, it's not worth it. But if you post big projects, you can put a rubric in and then use that same rubric to grade the assignment. Um, you can also check this box for originality reports. This will check assignments for plagiarism. So now I've created the post for the assignment, but I haven't added the worksheet or the material. So I need to go over here and this, I forget to do this all the time. Please remember, to click this attachment, this paper clip, and click Add. Now this is how I'm going to add my file. I can add something from my Google Drive, um, which is the easiest way to do it. I can add a link, like a video I want students to watch or a website I want them to go to. 
I can upload a file or I can put in a video from YouTube. So let's say I want to upload a file. So I can simply drag and drop or I can find a file from my Google Drive. So if I click on my drive, this will show me all the folders in my drive, which I can then search through to find the file. Or I can go to upload if my folder is not in Google Drive. Let's say I have something I want to upload, right? Let's say I have something on my desktop that I want to upload. I have this PowerPoint here called Sample. I want students to look at the PowerPoint and then answer some questions. Okay, so I'm going to put this sample, just drag and drop. Did you see how I did that? I just clicked it, drag it over, and drop, and it will upload the assignment. Right? Now I've got that one. Let's say I want to add another file. Let's say I want to add, you can do it this way too. You can click on things and add files that way. Let's say I also want to upload a worksheet. Right, so I'll just say, let's say this, this notes sheet. This is something I made for my religion class, but let's say this is the assignment for here. So I can just click that, put that in there too. And now I have everything I need, I can click upload. So I'll show you how to do that one more time with the Google Drive. So let's say I want to, like you have recent, now this is the quickest way to do it, right? You can click on add, click on Google Drive, and then here is everything you've recently looked at, right? So you can see I've been grading some projects, I've been working on lesson planning. Um, here's my sample PowerPoint that I just made. Let's say I just finished making that, I can click on it and click add, and now it's linked. Now let's say I have something else, but I can't remember where I put the file. I, it's in some folder someplace and I can't find it. So let's just search for the name. Let's say I wanted to find this fundamental attribution error worksheet. So I can make instructions, please view the slides. Now when you're uploading files, it's going to default to students can view the file. This means they can look at it, but they can't make any changes. You can click in this drop down and then click down here where it says make a copy for each student. This will give each student an individual copy of the worksheet or whatever piece of material you want to use. That way they can type in their answers and then submit it back to you um, with minimal effort. So this is what I recommend if you're trying to put assignments in for students to work on. Um, you put the assignment in, make a copy for each student, and then they can put it back in. They can submit it back to you. Okay, so now let's see. We've got a title. We've got directions. We've got our materials posted on here. We have our PowerPoint. We have our worksheet. We've set a due date and a topic. We have a number of points, and we've decided who we're going to give it to. Okay, great. We're done making this assignment. Notice it says saved up here. It's been saving continuously, so even if I accidentally closed this window, um, classroom would save this as a draft so I could come back to it and post it later. In fact, let me show you how that works. So let's say I lost track of what I was doing, I messed around with something else, and I lost my assignment. When I went back on to my class, I could go to classwork, and here it is, sample assignment, and see how it's in gray? I can simply click on that, I can, and it will show me what's in there. And then I can click down here where it says edit assignment. That will let me finish, make any changes I want to finish making, and then I can click Assign. Right? And so then it will say, do you want to do this? Are you actually finished? Students will see it. Click Assign. Yes. I do want to assign this piece of work for my students. So then it will load. And be slow. And then, boom, there it is. So now under Unit 1, we have our sample assignment, and any other assignments that you had made would show up there too. So now I'll show you what this looks like on the stream. If you go back to the stream, so here is that post that I made earlier when I sent a message. Now here's my assignment, sample assignment. Now let's say students have submitted some work to this. Right, so when you click on this assignment again, after you've posted it, if you simply click on it, it will take you to the default. There's two ways you can look at an assignment in Google Classroom. You can see the individual student work. Any students that have turned things in here it would show up on the side by name and you could click on each individual student's name and see the work that they had done in this big window over here. 
or you can click on instructions to go back to what the assignment looks like. And this is exactly how it looks for students. When they click on the assignments, this is what they see. Okay, so that is how we post assignments in Google Classroom. That's sort of the easiest thing um, to do. Remember, in order to create new assignments, we have to we start at the stream, we have to go to classwork, and then we have to click on create. So let's say I don't want to have the students do any work, I just want to share some material with them. So I can click on classwork, click on create, and then click material. This is how you share material. In my experience, separate individual posts for each type of work is better for the students. They understand it more easily than posting something that says materials for chapter 12 and everything is in one post. They don't find that very easy to use. I started off doing it that way. Um, it's not very helpful for the students. They prefer it if you make individual posts for each type of material, notes, worksheets, practices, if each item has its own post, um, its own assignment. So I can make a material. I've titled it something. I might decide it wants to be in unit one with my worksheet that I just made, and I'm going to click on add. Now again, same deal. I can post a file. I can do something from my Google Drive. I want to upload something from my Google Drive. Okay, but it's not one of these things. It's something else. So I'm going to go find it, right? I'm going to click on my drive, and then I'm going to navigate through my folders to find where this piece of information is in my Google Drive folder. So let's say I want to post something from unit one, and it's notes that I'm posting. So I'll go, let's say it's my lecture on statistics. So I'll find the file, click on it, and click add. And there it appears. Now I'm finished. My work has been saved. I can click post. Now let's say I don't want this to post right away. Let's say I want students to do something else first. I want to save this for later. I can click the drop down next to post and click schedule. Schedule means it won't post today. Let's say I want this to post tomorrow. So I'll schedule it for tomorrow. I can even set a time for noon, let's say. And then I can click schedule. I'm finished. This will show up in the student stream automatically after that scheduled time happens. So those will post tomorrow at noon instead of, or on Wednesday at noon, Thursday at noon instead of uh, today. So in the stream, that note slide won't appear yet because it's not the 19th. So now let's say I want to give students a quiz. Now quiz, this can be formative or summative, um, but this is a decent way to ask students some questions and get, the, um, get them some feedback and figure out how much they know really fast without having to grade anything yourself. So I use this all the time for things like vocabulary drills, or quick little practice worksheet. So you can click on quiz assignment. And when you do it, it looks like everything else. Right? We can call it, you know, please take the quiz, whatever. Put some directions. These instructions are optional. You don't have to type anything here if you don't want to. But notice Google has created a blank quiz for us in a Google form. And you can even lock this on Chromebooks so that students can't look at other pages while they are taking the quiz. I don't recommend that for distance learning simply because not every student has their Chromebook. Um, some of them, the ones that go to the academies, they have different computers and so they won't be able to view this if you lock it. So I recommend leaving that alone. We can set this to unit one like our other information. We can say this is going to be due tomorrow. Um, maybe we can say this quiz is worth 20 points. Okay, now you click, this quiz is blank, but if you click on it, you will then uh, be taken to this Google form, which Google Forms are super handy for doing little quizzes like this because it'll grade itself. So I'm going to call this sample quiz. Please answer each question. You could also put other directions based on the question type. Um, so that's, you type that stuff in. Then you can go down here and put some questions. Right, you can just type whatever things in here. 
multiple choice. There are different question types too. So if let's say I don't want this to be a multiple choice question, I can click over here at the question type. I can do different check boxes. I can make it short answer questions, whatever you want to do. Um, and then once you're done writing your question, you can click down here where it says answer key, give it a number of points and say which you can click the boxes that you want to be the right answers. You can also have multiple right answers in one question. And you can add feedback if you click on here and you can type. You don't have to give feedback, but it's helpful for students, especially if you're not going to be there to verbally go over things with them. Right? So then I can click done. And if I want to add another question, I simply hit this plus. I can keep going. Right? Answer key. Let's make this one 10 points. Right? And then click done. And you can put as many things in here as you want. You can put videos and images in. Google Forms are super fun to play with, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it because that's a different video. Um, so then it saves automatically. So all you, you can close this. You don't have to leave it open anymore, whatever. Um, you can go ahead and click, go back to your assignment that you were posting and click Assign. Okay, now let's go back to the stream. We can take a look at what our quiz looks like. So here's the quiz. I can go ahead and click on it again to open it, and you can see all the changes that we made. Now, this is how it will look for students, right? The students, when they see this, this is exactly how it will appear, whatever. Let's say I wasn't finished making this quiz. I want to edit this some more. I can click on the pencil down here and change some things. So I'll show you some more settings you can change. Um, you can use this paint palette to change the color, and you can put pictures in the background, um, or you can click this gear to change some settings. Um, you can change whether you want to limit them to one or more responses. I recommend restricting this to LCPS users and collecting student emails. That way you can get the quiz to grade itself automatically. If you want students to be able to attempt it multiple times, you can just uncheck this box here. Um, if you go over onto the right hand side and click where it says quizzes, this notice this toggle is checked. This says make this a quiz. It will assign point values and allow auto grading. Google will grade it automatically and import the responses and automatically give your students a grade and immediate feedback. So that's really helpful. You make sure that's checked um, and you can click save. So now we're done with that. That's how you make a quiz assignment. Let's go back to our class um, and I'll show you if you go to create um, what it looks like to create a question. Um, your question. Um, so let's say I wanted students to have a discussion about something. And I don't want this discussion to be graded. I want it to be ungraded. Um, I want this to be finished by Friday. So I'm going to click on Friday. And this is still part of Unit 1. So now I've got all this information done over here. I can say whether students can reply to each other, and I can decide whether I want students to be able to edit their responses, which I don't. I want them to just do it for the first time. Um, I could add a link to a video. Let's say there was something on YouTube that I wanted to find. Um, right. Well, let's say I want this one, right? So I'm going to add this video onto my, uh, my assignment here. And then I want them to do some kind of discussion after. And then I can just click Ask. Right, and if we go back to our stream, you'll see here's a question. And when you click on it, um, students will see it like this. 
So this is what students will see, and then they can type a comment. And they can click send, and that will post their comment so that everyone else can see what their answers are, and they can have a discussion that way. Um, so those are some of the basics for how to use Google Classroom. I'm not going to go into too much on grades um, because I don't want to uh, show you my real students' names and grades. Uh, but that should help you at least be able to post assignments, um, give some quick little quizzes to the students, and, uh, and get through this distance learning together as a team. Um, please, you should know my email address if you work at my school. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions or you want me to help guide you through some of this stuff. Um, I am parenting a toddler while doing this, but I'm happy to help whenever I can. So just contact me and let me know if you need any help. And thanks for watching.